friends. Welcome to worship at Santa Clarita United Methodist Church. My name is Rachel Tabutal and I am the lead pastor here at the church. We welcome you this final Sunday of July as we begin our sermon series based on the movie Encanto and the wisdom from that movie as we talk about the charm of Santa Clarita United Methodist Church. We're so excited that you're here today in person or online and we invite you to prepare your hearts and I totally stole Mike's words. Mike, did you prepare something? Would you like to say something? Okay, perfect. I realized that Mike's name was at the top of there, so forgive me. Um, I was just so excited to be in worship with you all today that I wanted to make sure that I welcomed you. You will notice that this is not Cassie sitting at the piano, but our friend Ben, and he is here because Cassie is on vacation. Josh is also out of town traveling in Austria at this moment. So we thank Aaron for coming forward and helping us with worship and leading us in our music. Oh, good morning. All right, so please stand as we sing forever. It's kind of um, a call and response song. So. If you don't know what I'm going to sing, you can respond with just saying, His love endures forever. Amen? Right. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever, for He's good, He is above all things. His love endures forever, sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand, with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing forever. Forever God is faithful. to the setting sun his love endures forever the grace of god we will carry on his love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise
in this place of openness that we can come knocking. We come to this place to be embraced by the one whose heart is never locked. Now all together, how can we ever understand the mystery of your love, O oh God? How can we ever estimate the value of your compassion and mercy in our weaknesses and brokennesses, in our strengths and wholenesses, we find the touch of your support and creative energy. In our fears and suffering, in our joys and pleasures, we find the moistness of your tears and the percussion of your laughter. In our failures and despair, in our successes and our dreams, we find the comfort of your forgiveness and the inspiration of your spirit. These are gifts beyond measure, and we can only respond with joyful praise. You are the home we long for, the family where we discover that we truly belong, the hearth where we are warmed and renewed, and we worship you with our whole being, wonderful and loving God. Amen. You may be seated. Never 
gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love and on and on Yes, it overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I'll never ever have to be afraid Yes, one thing remains Yes, one thing remains Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. out. You never give up on us. We give you thanks for that fact and the fact that you loved us before we could even love you. You have invited us into relationship with you and said, we are your precious, beloved children of God who are beautiful to behold. And for that, we give thanks. We are in awe of the way in which your love continues to shape us and guide us. How deeply you have loved us, Jesus how willingly you stepped into our experience, how completely you emphasized, with, empathized with all of us and all that we had to endure. Teach us to love as you have loved us. How sacrificially you have loved us, Jesus. How completely you gave yourself for us. How courageously you suffered for our sakes. Teach us to love as you have loved us. How restoratively have you loved us, Jesus? How generously have you shared your life? How extravagantly have you made yourself available to us? Teach us to love as you have loved us. We praise you for your love, which is given, which is given so freely and unconditionally. We thank you for believing that we could learn to offer such love to each other. As we think about the love that you have given to us, we think about the t places and the people in our lives that need that love right now, that need your healing, that need your grace, that need your wisdom. Be with all of those people in all of those places that they might sense your presence and see how you are reaching out in love to us this day. We lift up prayers for everyone who is battling COVID right now, including our own Jessica Welsh. Be with her in her healing, be with everyone in their healing, that they might feel your presence and they might uh, experience the symptoms for not too long. We lift up prayers for all of those that are impacted by the conflict in Ukraine. Be with those that are in the center of the action. Be with those who have loved ones that they cannot be in contact with. Be with those whose lives are forever transformed by all that is happening there. Lord, send your healing down to that place. Soften hearts and allow us to see a way through this conflict. We lift up prayers for Reed as he has lost uh, one of his middle school best friends on Thursday. Be with this friend's family as they grieve his passing, that they might know your presence and they might know how you walk with them in the midst of their mourning. Lord, there are prayers on our hearts that we've yet to even put to words, and we take a moment in silence to lift up those prayers to you.
amazed, O oh Lord, that your love goes on and on and on. Allow that love to overwhelm and satisfy our souls so that we can go into the world confident of that love, letting go of the fear, of the pain, of the things that are holding us back from living truly and deeply the lives that you have called us to, and help us to see the ways in which you are encouraging us to take new steps of faith, to live new lives, to come out of the waters, and to be made new by the depth of your love. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for This morning we said these gifts are beyond measure and we can only respond with joyful praise but in the maturing of our faith journey we remember our pledge to give back to you God a measure of our gifts our presence our prayers our service and also our witness how we show your love in each of these measures is how we thank you when we come to worship every Sunday but also when we show up to sit at the bedside of someone in the hospital or in hospice, we show your love in our presence. When we pray here on a Sunday morning, but also lift up in prayer, when we hear a siren or see an ambulance drive by, we show your love in our prayer. When we sign up to provide a meal for the Bridge to Home Shelter, but also when we help out with the after-school tutoring or bringing coffee and donuts to the patio on Sunday, we show your love in service. And when we share with the coworker not only what we believe, but what we in our church are doing in this community and in the world, we show your love in our witnessing. And when we recognize the unbelievable bounty that has befallen us and give a portion back in cold hard cash or check to God, we show we own the love that you have always and forever given to us. And the ushers will now joyfully assist us in our giving.
Dear Lord, please take these gifts and let them help to do your work in this world. Amen. You may be seated.
Our New Testament scripture is from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dos oruguitas enamoradas pasan sus noches y madrugadas llenas de hambre siguen andando y navegando un mundo que cambia y sigue cambiando navegando un mundo que cambia y sigue cambiando Dos orujitas paran el viento mientras se abrazan con sentimiento siguen creciendo no saben cuándo buscar algún rincón y el tiempo sigue cambiando inseparables son y el tiempo sigue cambiando y orujitas no se aguanten más hay que crecer parte y volver hacia adelante seguirán vienen milagros vienen crisalidas hay que partir y construir su propio futuro Dos orujitas desorientadas en dos capullos bien abrigadas llenos de sueños ya solo falta hacer lo necesario en un mundo que sigue cambiando tumbando sus paredes ahí viene nuestro milagro Cosas. No se aguanten más Hay que crecer aparte y volver Hacia adelante seguirán Ya son milagros Rompiendo crisalidas Hay que volar, hay que encontrar 
encontrar su propio futuro Hay mariposas, no se aguanten más Hay que crecer, aparte volver Hacia adelante seguirán, ya son milagros Rompiendo crisálidas Hay que volar, hay que encontrar su propio futuro Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Can we thank Michael once more for singing that song for us? This song is the seminal song in the movie Encanto. It was nominated for an Oscar and really highlights the struggle of the movie. But we'll get to that. Will you guys join me in a moment of prayer? Awesome and almighty God, we give you thanks for this day, for the ways in which your spirit flows among us and through us, around us, inviting us to see the ways in which you are challenging each one of us to embrace the fact that we are always changing, inviting us to transformation, inviting us to new life. Help us to see the ways in which you are inviting us to grow apart and grow together so that we might become most fully ourselves in, in the reality of your love. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our theme today is what is our guiding factor? And our signature character from the movie is the matriarch, Abuela Alma. For those of you who don't know much about the movie Encanto, I invite you to join us on Friday at five o'clock for Taco Bar and movie, uh, as we have the opportunity to see the movie together. But I realize that some of you have not seen it yet, so I just wanna give you a little bit of the backstory. Our movie takes place in a small village in Colombia that was established out of heartache. Alma and Pedro, her husband, along with their newborn triplets, fled their home as they were threatened by war. They got to a river crossing and were separated. Pedro stayed to protect his family while the rest of them fled across the river along with their community members. Asking for a miracle, Alma and those fleeing with her find refuge in a village surrounded by the mountains where a casita is magically built and the family is bestowed with blessings and gifts. For those of you who don't know, this casita is alive, in, in, for lack of a better word. And at the fifth birthday of each of the triplets and most of the grandkids, each of them is bestowed with a gift to help benefit the community. Abuela, Alma is the keeper of the candle, the symbol of the gift, and she takes her role extremely seriously. She runs a tight ship and has grand expectations for her family and the gifts that they have been given. Over the course of time, Abuela begins to fear losing the enchantment more than recognizing the blessing that it has provided. This is where the story in the movie begins. The youngest grandchild is hoping to receive a gift from the house, from the casita, from the enchantment or the encanto. The second youngest child, Mirabel, must wrestle with being the only grandchild to not receive a gift. Abuela treats Mirabel harshly because of this reality. Similarly, our story together starts with a backstory. We all come from different places and spaces, having been here for varying periods of time. Some of us have been here for decades. Some of us are new and are worshiping for the first few times. We have joys and celebrations, as well as heartaches and sorrows that we carry with us. And that's just a truth of the situation. And as we carry them with us, it informs the ways that we function in the world and how we interact with each other. We have been nurtured by our own family system, as well as the family system that has been created in this community. The ways we interact with each other are affected by both our family of choice and the family that we have created here in this place. 
Both Abuela and Mirabelle, the heroine of the story, along with others, are beginning to become that there's some problems in their casita. Mirabelle is talking about there being cracks in the casita, and Abuela wants to hold fast to the fact that there's nothing wrong. But when she is in the private thoughts, or the privateness of her own thoughts and lifting up prayers to God and talking to her deceased husband, she acknowledges that something's wrong as well. Alma is holding on tightly, trying to maintain order and control to keep things as they have always been. Mirabelle is trying to address the cracks in ways that make Abuela very uncomfortable. In Abuela's attempt to maintain order and control, her expectations are becoming intangible for her family to live into. We will touch about touch on all of the different ways that each of the family members have different realities that they are living into and the expectations that they have and how they apply to us as members of the church. But that's going to be over the course of a couple different sermons. Because of the ways in which Abuela Alma is living in the world, there is some unintentional generational trauma as the children and grandchildren try to live into and up to their grandmother's expectation. The truth is, because of the pain and the heartache that Abuela Alma has experienced, she has allowed her guiding factor to be one of fear. So afraid to lose the miracle, she has become hardened, just like the mountains around the village. Our scripture today talks about perfect love casting out fear. This is how Mirabelle tries to live, exemplifying her love for her family and her home and the miracle. Letting love be her guiding principle or her guiding factor. As we work to share the charm of Santa Clarita United Methodist Church with others, we must ask ourselves, what is our guiding factor? Will we hold on to the past with such fervor that we can't see the new gifts that God has given us? Will we seek control or perfection or performance as our markers of success? Will we allow fear to build walls around ourselves? And if so, will that protection accomplish anything? Or will we embrace love and those different from us? Will we allow love to be our guiding factor as we think about how we might be a blessing to the community, both our worshiping community and the larger community? Will we celebrate the different interests and likes and allow them to live in harmony? I mean, just look at today. We've had music from Encanto and a bassoon. We've had praise music because Cassie and Josh aren't here to lead us in the traditional music, but we celebrate that on a regular basis. And the bigger question is, will we allow these differences to come together in such a fluid way that it adds to the charm of our church? At the climax of the movie, Abuela Alma has a choice. Will she let fear continue to be her guiding factor? Or will she let love lead the way? At this point in the movie is where we find the song that Michael sang for us this morning. The lyrics are about two caterpillars who are making their way in the world, finding love yet yearning for change, learning to navigate in a world that never stops changing or turning itself. Through the process of transforming into butterflies, the two learn about themselves and each other. Some of my favorite lyrics from that song, when translated into English, say, don't you hold on too tight. Both of you, it's your time to grow, to fall apart, and to reunite. Wonders await you just on the other side. Trust they'll be there and start to prepare the way for tomorrow. And then it also says, it's your time to go, to fly apart, to reunite. Wonders surround you, don't let or just let the walls come down. Don't look back behind you. Fly till you find your way toward tomorrow. Those words are so powerful as we think about what it means to live into the charm of Santa Clarita United Methodist Church. How do we celebrate 
the things that have brought us together and the ways in which we're different? How do we allow ourselves to grow separately but reunite in such a way that we can celebrate tomorrow? How do we let the walls of fear, anxiety, mistrust fall away so that we truly can let love lead in ways that are transformative and powerful, inviting us to be the people that God has called us to be, living out of love, transforming the world, using the spiritual gifts around us. Now, around 11.30 today, discussion questions will be emailed to you because I just had so much fun with the sermon series that I wrote a bunch of discussion questions as well. If you are not on the church email list, this is your unsolicited invitation to sign up and to email Mario and say, I didn't get the questions, get me on there. I wanna see what Pastor Rachel has to ask. I ask you the questions about who those two caterpillars in the story might be as they transform into butterflies. I'll let you discern that because I have, I've come up with like three different answers on my own. So clearly there's no correct answer as far as I'm concerned, but I want us to think about it and to like, take some time in the song to see how, how God might be talking to us and seeing our world a little bit differently. Abuela Alma is a strong matriarch who grows and learns throughout the story. We are all on a journey to grow, to adapt, to let love be our guiding factor, encouraging one another, nurturing each other's gifts, and shining the light of our miracle, the love of God and salvation found in Jesus Christ with others. As we spend the next few weeks wrestling with the themes within Encanto and how it imply, applies to the charm of Santa Clarita United Methodist Church, I hope that we can always, each and every week, start from the place of asking, what is my guiding factor? Amen? Amen. All right. Well, thank you. And in terms of what is our guiding factor, we have an adult here in worship with us tonight who, who wants to make that next step of faith, to claim how God is at work in her life and how God is, is transforming her and inviting her into the steps of baptism. Uh, Kids, I know you're in the back. I'll invite you guys to watch the baptism and we'll have a conversation once it's done. I wanna invite Monica to come forward at this time. I have to change documents, forgive me. <laughs> All right, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. I present to you Monica Carly Sanford for baptism. Monica, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, repent or reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sins? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. According to the grace given you, will you remain faith, a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? If so, say, I will. I will. All right, to the congregation, I think we're going to have a question up on the screen in just a moment. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. Yes. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include Monica in your care? Monica, I'll invite you to come over here if you would. I'm going to steal this podium so I have a place for my notes. And I'll invite you to join me in prayer. 
Almighty and eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the deep waters and brought forth life. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom across the sea. Your children brought through the Jordan to the land you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the waters of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples and shared in the baptism of his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this gift of water and those who will receive it. Wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. Amen. Now, Monica, this is... This water is a mixture of water from Santa Clarita and from the River Jordan. So you have water that Jesus was baptized. Well, the water is flowed on, but you know, the symbolism of the same river that Jesus was baptized in, you are being baptized in, well, in as well. Monica Carley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Monica Carley, child of God, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. And now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. And we have one more phrase up here. God of of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. If you want to dry off, you can do that. Um, I have your baptismal certificate down in the office, so I'll get that for you after worship. Congratulations, and let us receive Monica. Thank you. All right, kiddos, you have waited so patiently and participated in the baptism with us. I want to invite you to come up here with me to the baptismal font. You can surround it if you want to. You can play in the water. You can look at it. Try not to make too much of a mess. Come on in, Austin. Awesome. Right, but it's water, so it's okay. So we've been talking about Encanto in worship today. Did you guys know that? Yes. Well, I know you did. I've been telling you over and over again at home. I've been so excited. So in the story of Encanto, there's two important scenes in the movie that happen, that happen at a river. Can you guys think of what those two scenes might be? Okay, okay. we're going to go Maya, Mark, Ozzy, and Elodie if she has something. No, you can say one. When Abuela and Mirabel hug, I like it. What is another, do you have another time? What's that? When Abuelo Pedro dies. Oh, when, when Abuelo Pedro dies as he's saving and taking care of the family. Did you want to add something, Elodie? Okay, one sec. When they, when they make the miracle burn a little bit more? Is that what you mean? Okay. Ozzy, what did you want to say? Or did you just want to play with the water? That works. What do you want to say? What's up, sweetheart? You changed your mind. Okay. Um, 
So water is amazing because when we talk about baptism, we talk about how we have new life. And both of those times with Abuela, she had a new life come to her. One of them was kind of based out of fear. The other one, oh, we're not quite done yet, guys. The other one was based out of new life as Mirabelle and Abuela no made up, no was made out of love, thank you. No and, room, okay, buddy. let's wipe That's our hands. Friends, let's dry our hands and come to our seat, okay? Let's dry our hands and come sit down on the steps. All right, Ozzy, here's a towel for you if you'd like it. Thank you. Let's sit down. All right. We, I, no, you have to share the two towels, okay? All right. So as I was saying, there's two times. One, her life was transformed out of sadness and fear. The other time, her life was transformed out of love. When we remember our baptism, our lives are transformed by God's love because God's love casts out all fear. And we are blessed in the gift of baptism. As you played with the water today, I hope you remembered your baptism. And if you haven't been baptized yet, you might go to mom or dad or someone else and go, can I celebrate baptism? Because I would love to do that with you. This is a great gift where we are made new through the gift of water. Will you guys join me in the Lord's Prayer? All right, let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, you guys can head back to your seats as we invite Aaron and Ben back for our last song. Would you like me to steal that, Elodie? Yes. Thank you. Elevate. Please stand and we sing Amazing Love, You Are My King. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. Now I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Let's sing that again. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. Now I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love. Amazing love. That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Sing, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned. Now I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Amazing love, amazing love, how can it be? That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's 
Christ who meets you with love and the Holy Spirit who inspires you to love goes with you each and every day as your guiding factor. Amen. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind blow at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face. God hold. 